On the 5-Minute Leadership Podcast, we do our best to help you solve your leadership shortages. The last few episodes, we've talked about the idea of habits that sustain ministry. The first habit is public worship. The second habit is personal devotions. And today I want to talk about private service. A couple of years ago, I was visiting a friend of mine who pastors one of the largest churches here in Metro Manila. We were talking about ministry challenges and strategic ideas to overcome those challenges. And while we were talking, I noticed several kids who looked like they were very poor uh, would approach him and he knew their names. And they would speak and they would run off and play and others would come and there were quite a few of them. Uh, I was asking him who were these kids and how did he know them, and he kept changing the subject back to the ministry challenges we were talking about. The conversation would go on and I would go back to those kids. Finally, he explained to me that he and his wife were taking care of these kids. They lived in the informal settlement, which was just outside of his village or his neighborhood, and they were feeding them and clothing them and taking care of their school expenses. And they were living in this settlement but they knew they could come to his house with anything they needed. This had been going on for a long time. I, I got excited about it, and, and I started saying, well, asking about what the church was doing. He said, oh, no, no, no. He said, the church has many things that we do in the poor communities. They have a massive feeding program. It's quite impressive. They minister to the kids that live under the bridges on the highways. He said, but we don't want the church to know we do this. This is something just my wife and I do because we're Christians. And he explained to me there are many things that we do as pastors and as leaders, and we're leading a program. Yes, we have a heart of compassion for the people, but it's still because of our position. And, and my friend explained to me, he said, you know, there are certain things that my wife and I just need to do because we're Christians, that out of our relationship with God, we want to, not as a program, not as a leader, but as a follower of Christ, we want to do things to the least of these, and Jesus takes it personally, and this is about our relationship with Jesus. I was so impressed with that and deeply convicted about that. I thought about Matthew 6, where Jesus said, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they've received their reward in full, but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And that was the heart of what my friend was doing. It's not that it's wrong to stand up in front of the church and take an offering to help people who are less fortunate. That's important to do. But yet in our own discipleship and our own walk with God, there are things that we do that no one else is supposed to know about. When I was in college, I had quite a few roommates. We lived in this house and uh, different of us had different chores each week and it changed. I remember one time, it seemed like everybody's chores were miraculously happening. We thought we were having an angelic visitation or something. The person who was supposed to do the dishes, the dishes were done when he got there. The, the one who was supposed to cut the grass, it was done when, when he got there. And the one who was supposed to clean the showers and the bathrooms, it was done. And it just seemed like something was happening, nobody could understand it. And one of the rare occasions when I was awake early in the morning, I figured out what was going on. We had a roommate named John Davis and I caught him doing my chores. And I said, John, are you the one who's been doing this for the last few weeks? And he, he goes, shh, he goes, Steve, please don't tell anyone. John didn't want anyone to know what he was doing. He was doing it under the Lord. This was his worship to the Lord. He was serving Jesus by serving others. And he said, Steve, please don't tell anyone. And I said, okay, John, listen, I won't tell anyone as long as you keep doing my chores. And of course, he was glad to do it. And uh, I'm telling you now, but that was 40 years ago, so it probably doesn't matter at this point. But I've, again, I've never forgotten that lesson of secret service, serving in secret, not so that anyone can see, but there are things as believers. Yes, we're leaders and we have to do things publicly as leaders, as examples, but there has to be a part of our life where we're serving in ways that no one knows. It's only for Jesus to know. We're doing it unto him, and he looks and he says, when you do it to the least of these, it's like you're doing it unto me. For longevity in ministry, for, for habits that sustain ministry, one of those habits is learning to serve in secret. Serving the least, not as a ministry department, but as an individual follower of Christ.